In this video, we're going to look at these two Pentium PCs. This one's got a Windows 7 sticker. They both have Intel Pentium inside. And I don't know if they work, but um, let's find out. Hopefully this will be a quick video. Um, but whenever I say that, I end up spending a very long time um, trying to work out what's wrong with the system and all sorts of things go wrong and everything takes much longer. But on the back of this PC, we've got so little. <laughs> we've got one VGA connector, four USB Ethernet and audio. So there's no uh, keyboard, mouse, PS2 connections. There's no DVI. Um, what else do you normally get on the back of a PC? Um, there's basically not a lot at all. Um, so that kind of keeps things simple, I guess. And we've got a power supply here. And let's have a look inside because, um, yeah, we need to make sure that we've got everything we need. Um, so inside, we've got no drive. Um, I think there's probably meant to be a hard drive caddy here that would be holding the drive. Yeah, and this, this is where it's meant to be uh, screwed in here. Um, but we've got the cables, we've got the cable for that. We've got no memory. Um, we've got PCI there, PCI Express, and then old school PCI. And then, ooh, We've got a little um, mini PCI Express there, I think. Um, four SATA connections, a couple of jumpers here. And a couple of fans, they both spin. And then power supply, which is an HP. Um, let's have a look total 300 watts so as is always a good idea we will start by testing the power supply um just because if that goes bang it might take stuff with it um so i'll just quickly test this um with the power supply tester Got a CPU connector here. And there's no switch on the back of the power supply. So when I plug this in, it should switch on straight away. Okay. 12.1, 12.1, 5.1, 3.3, 12.1 and 5.1. That looks good. And there's no sort of unexpected noises from the power supply. So I would say we're good to give this a try. The motherboard is an H-IG41-Micro ATX Revision 1.1. This is an HP board. And um, I'll just look online to see what memory this takes. With a G41, I'd be expecting DDR2. So I've had a quick look. Uh, this is what's come up on Google. And it looks like it's actually a DDR3 motherboard. Um, this is ended. It doesn't look like it's actually sold. So it's probably not worth that much money. But um, there's what it is just for uh, information. So I've put in some DDR3 memory. I've got a two gigabyte stick here. Oops. Connect up the power again. Plug in a SATA drive that I've got. Uh, 
um, we can power it up. Okay, so I'm going to plug the power in. We've got a light on the back of the power supply. I'm going to press the power button, which is on the side. That also lights up. And uh, we're getting beeps. So that's one short beep and one long beep. Okay, so this might be the memory. So I'll take it out and plug it back in and see what happens if we do that again. Okay, that time it's switched on. So we've got um, DVD RAM, two gigs of RAM. And where is the information about the processor in the system? Can anyone see it? Oh, here we go. Pentium dual core CPU E5500 at 2.8 gigahertz. Um, is that good? Is that bad? I'll just have to have a quick look online to see what kind of CPU that is. Okay, so um, CPU benchmark gives us a score of 1000. Um, this is dual core processor, 65 watts, socket LGA775, and it's from 2010. So, um, I guess this is one of those PCs that is kind of uh, borderline. Let's see if it boots into Windows 10 and see what that's like. But um, yeah, it's kind of borderline between being almost good enough for Windows 10 and for it to be usable and it being not good enough, I guess. At this point, I'm thinking really for Windows 10, you're better off with a quad core processor. Um, and maybe these could be upgraded or I don't know if this one's going to be the same, but my guess is that it will be the same, but it might not be, but we'll find out. Um, but it works. It's quiet. Um, it takes DDR3 memory, um, which means it's easy to upgrade the memory to quite a decent amount, um, even though there's only two slots. Um, let's have a quick look at Task Manager. Okay, well, let's see if the next PC works and if it's the same. Okay, so I've taken the memory out of this one so we can use it in the next one. And Let's have a look what we've got with this one. It's the same on the back. Looks like everything else is the same. Same um, power supply. And inside we've got, maybe this is different actually. Looks slightly different. But again, it's a um, 300 watt power supply. This one's much dustier inside. Uh, and it looks like the hard drive cage has been removed from this as well. So let's test the power supply like we did with the other one. And 
Let's plug the power in. It's very quiet, but we're getting good um, levels here. 12 volts, 5 and 3.3. And the fan is going in the back. It was so quiet, I thought I would just check that. So let's connect up um, this PC. It's got a stick of uh, memory in there already. So let's put this in. Why not give it some more? Um, so the stick of added is two gigabytes. And look what we've got in there already. And we've got this, which is a two gigabyte stick of DDR3. It doesn't give a very satisfying click for some reason. Connect the same drive we used for the other system. Oh, I've used a uh, different cable. the power button and it's working Let's see what the processor we've got with this one okay is that meant to be red or is that a cable issue uh, changing system settings while resuming okay let's just enter setup um it's not detected the optical drive because it's not connected we've got four gigabytes of ram and the processor is the same an e5500 okay that's fine um, let's boot into windows and see how that goes there's no disk in the drive the optical drive Okay, so we've booted up. Let's have a look at Task Manager. So we're looking fine. Um, so what to do with these systems, really? What to do with these two PCs? Um, let's have a look at the um, heatsink and see if it's any good. It's, you know... A socket 775 system and in theory you could put a quad core in here Q6600 but if the heatsink isn't up to the job of keeping it cool then that's not necessarily going to be the best idea okay so we've got um, hex screws or flathead screws we can use either flathead or the hex or Torx bits for this. I'm just using a flat head. And I'm trying to make sure I don't just end up with a video full of hands.
Hey. So it's got um, four wires, and it's pretty dusty, and it's not got a copper uh, core to the heat sink, and this thermal paste is quite dry, and it's also quite dusty. So this doesn't really look like this heatsink would do very well with a quad-core processor or a processor that takes a lot more heat than this. Um, I won't disturb this because I don't want dust to go under the processor. Um, but yeah, what would you do with this system? Would you upgrade the processor? Would you put a different operating system on other than Windows 10? Or, yeah, how would you turn this into a useful machine, considering it's a socket 775 and it's a G41 motherboard? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. And I think for once, it did end up being a quick easy video so yay